So the update view so far. So all the actions now have been loaded. As you can see. So we have. Is, so it, I, is this action based on the method? Yeah, the not necessarily, but there are some contexts of the stuff itself that is method based. For example, now when you try to share let's try to go through the shared flow and let's not do shared let's go through create so when you specify the mode that you want to yes. use to create the action so since because we choose uh we chose get the data source cannot be body okay. so if it was post now you can pull from body body this has to be either this so these are the fields within the category so those are the things I've done with this grid. So it has listed out the field. So for title, you choose where the source is coming from. Then you, the key to pick from the source. Then for description, the same thing. Then you assign a result um, variable to it. In case maybe you want to use that variable somewhere later on. So that's for creates. Um, let's come back, let's do check. Um, okay, also let's pull out the console here because it's going to be quite important. Okay, so model, category, block. So we can do this. Um, I can add filter, title, filter field, then it's content. So the source in this case, quads and maybe the title is fast too then you add this then you are done with the filtering then this in this case now for the shape operation you are trying to shape something the result variable name is required so you have to provide it because you can't just shape without it being referenced in the future so what field do you want to return from the shirt the title the variable the name you want to give to it then you add it so now if i add another uh action and i do shirt count and maybe i want to block so i want to add filter so maybe i want to add filter based on the category title or the block title itself then if it contains or exact let's say if it contains so now you can see that it's the result variable so as now so you can choose the value you want to use based on the one you defined before it and this thing is important as well so for example now if you defined a, a an action later on and give it a result variable an action before that cannot use that result because it's not available by that point so it's other base so so this one in this case is just name and i can add that so you can see now the filter one it's title i contains result variable then the name then you can be done then for this one as well because it's also a shape you have to reference the result variable so in this case we can use log then you 
add so now we have two actions for this so if i do done so now in this case now what exactly is i using your account variable to do if not really establish that it doesn't make sense and that's where return comes in so for example maybe you want to return the count at the end of the day the check count you understand so you can add a return action here and I specify what the action should do let me bring this one so i already defined what the return action would look like so look at this now so the return options include a constant so just enter what you would like to return maybe you don't want to return the string maybe your the process you have completed done is completed that's what you want to return you to understand then a serializable object so maybe the source is the variable name then so this one is can be the, can be dependent so for example now let's say the source the response of your source let's say it's a model or a query set you would need a serializer to return yeah, that so in that case that would be considered but in this situation a, it's a great no, not just a variable name the value it's returning is a count which means it's just a number or a single of a single uh, data type instead of an object in this case it should not require to specify its realizer ah. but yeah that's true it's yeah. just a number just so so this the, sorry this check count mm -hmm. is not just basically meant to check the amount of items in the list of sorts. yes so now only one by two returns. yes now it's a count okay. then the check returns only value it doesn't return query sets do you think that I by because check now mm. what's my feeder check is meant to return only true or false no it returns a value you want to check you want to for example now you want to get a value from a query set and use it somewhere else that is the intention so maybe you want to get the title value from a query set or so on. The part where you actually get a query set is the create. Okay. So I think we probably might need a get as well. So a get operation where you just get a query set that return is a query set. Yeah. yeah. So that's an avenue. So I think the way we are going to undo the return option here is when you implement the return and you specify that i want to the source of my return should be the variables name the variable names that are defined yeah the variable names that are defined i think for every actions that we are performing it's going to, have a return. It's going to tell you what the return type would look like yeah. and based on that return type we are going to tell it okay this return is a get it's returning the query set for that you are going to need a serializer for it. This one is a number. You are going to. You don't need a serializer. You just need to specify your key, because if it's a number, you don't just want it to return a number. You want to specify your key and the number. So it's not be like an object. That, okay, this is the key, and this is the value. So that's that's the whole idea. So there's an object where you specify your key. And the value the value sources are quads maybe there is a quad information that you want to return or the query params or the result variable that you want to return so yeah i think the next consideration is going to be um the return but now this also brings to mind so we also need to have a an action for a get where you get a full query set Rather than just getting the. Is that what our filter can do? No. So look at the actions we have. We have the check. We have the check, check count. Retrieve and return a specified field, specific fields okay. value from a record, which is a query set. Check the count. count. Retrieve count. So the, it, this explanation is quite straightforward. Create a new record in a specified model. Okay. Update, delete, return. Is arithmetic that return is just giving us this yeah so the, it, it so for example after performing your action what do you want to return out that's what the return is all about okay. 
You know, in general, you have to return the response. Yeah. yeah, that's what this is. I mean, what are you returning? I want to should I see. So that's what the return is doing. Then the arithmetic is quite, is quite uh, self-explanatory. The stiff condition is the one that will be a little bit complex in the future, but we'll get to it. Um, the aggregates, I think for some reason, based on the based on the information here, so we have the model, model app, the aggregate is already implemented. Yeah, so this is already implemented. I have abstraction for this already. So the ones that are still a little bit complete. So check is done, share count is done, create is done, update is done, delete, delete is done. So we need to get get query. So this uh, this return is still so the only parameter for the return is the options. Because you are not dealing with maybe a model of you are just dealing with options. So Based on the options, we are going to add new things on the front end. So, and I've shown you the options now. It's a constant. Are you just running a string? But actually, I think the mm -hmm. the cost the, the only the, the only the only um, option that should actually exist is the object. But for me to think of it, if I'm using the return like a normal response, we need the status code. Yeah, we can also define that. And also, I think, if I know, if we have an ordinary get, mm. we also need to have a filter get, whereby you can get based on... And the get is going to be filtered now. It's, it's get, but the point, when I'm saying get, it's not about the filter. The issue is, the, the intention is just to tell you what you are returning. What you the check is returning the value from the query set. Yes. The count is returning the count. The get is returning, they expected to return a query set. You can decide to add filter or not. Mm -hmm. But the intention is that it, will, it returns a query set. Do you get that? Maybe you can use our shape to actually add that, but I think if we if we add too many functionality to it, it becomes because if we try to use our check, what if the person wants to get the old object? We do not have to be writing another condition for that. The person wants to get the it's not really so. For example, now let's say the person does specify the field that he wants to return from the check, it's going to be an object. Then it returns the old object. Yes, if the person now wants to return a specific, what about the, the person wants to change it? Change it, change it. For example, check for something from this table to its relationship table. We, we are not having that to it. We actually handled that already. That's what the filter is doing now. The filter chains now. Which can't um, don't you see that the filter chain? If I come back here and I go to this check count, or let me say I had another okay, shape. Okay, okay, okay. It chains okay. now. Yeah, it chains yeah. already. It goes to So you've not been following this thing? No. That's the meaning. Not been following it. it has, that has always been the. That we, I think we both define that function that gets the shame flow. Yes. It changes already. So the only issue is that if we do that, then we have to kind of check to know what the variable name is before we return, which is why we want to fix on um, on a get. And to create a get is quite easy. So let me put the get as the first one so get that is it i think it was really my mouth right this suggested the get set so the get the name is get the description retrieve records from a specific model based on the filter then the parameter name so it literally understood it the, the only thing I, now, don't, I don't want to include is the field and we don't include it. Now, this makes sense to me based on the field terms. So that means we can have our filter. If there is no filter, we can return all the objects. Yes, the filter is... So you based on filter. You, if you don't specify filter, then you just return the object by default. But there are two different conditions now. Because if you want to use the filter, you have to use the object.filter. If you don't want to use the filter, you have to use the object.all. No, it's not. We should put, if you use object of filter, you do not put anything in the filter. It's, it's going to return everything. Uh, well, you don't know. 
they don't they don't do anything. They just return everything. Just like updates. If you do update, not special everything. It's not going to update anything. The parameters is not a compulsory parameter. It's an optional. Okay. If you put it, I'll update it. If you don't put it, I'll return. I'll just do nothing. Yeah, that was what was confusing me because in such scenario, eh? Hey, my second question is now. If you now use a filter, mm -hmm. right, and you are going through the relationship table, whereby, for example, now you are going to the category. category. So you do blog, I am checking from your blog model, mm -hmm. blog underscore category. It's not blog, it's just category dash dash something. The first category is, a, is something under it. Okay, that one is going to be straightforward also. So yeah, because category is a field on that, but, but you want to go to title, so it's not the category dash dash title of the category. I was That's thinking, already there already. I was thinking that operation too we need the separate. No, no, it's not. But so it's this and does this. So I think the get the get is implemented already, so we don't have to do that. Then this one is going to be so return is just going to be object, not options. So object. So the object, I think we've established what it's going to be, and the status, status code, yeah, let's leave it like that. So let's push this. Shit. Add, get, action. Okay, so now that we've established this, then also another thing I want to consider is where we are getting the variable names from. I think we can just use the name. I'm a bit um, skeptical. that. So when I'm defining the variable name, I am not considering where the, uh, the method type is, or rather the action type is. So for example, now if the action type is a get, mm -hmm. then the variable name is an object. In that case, you need to specify a serializer. The serializer you want to use to render that stuff. Does that make sense? If the variable name is a check, you don't need to specify it, just a constant. If the variable name is a check count, you don't need to specify. If the variable name is a create, Yes. So the create should actually use. Okay, so this is not compulsory because you can just create and not return a variable name. So that's why it's not using use result variable name. So these ones are true because you can't just. You have to. Yeah. You have to make it. So then create. Create does not use variable. Uh, create use it's all uh, special then update, then delete. So I think delete, we can tell you not to use. There is nothing you are getting from delete. So use result variable is false. But then I want to get the name of the field you deleted. Yeah. You know, sometimes because of, you want to allow When you delete time. something, you don't get anything back. You, you, you can get the stuff before you delete. You can't get anything before after, after you delete. But it's not going to. It doesn't mean when you delete action, it doesn't. You don't assign it to the variable. You just delete. So that's why I want to tell you so that it won't render that variable name, so that it don't become redundant. So this becomes false. So then return also. This does not use a variable. This is false. Then arithmetic use if condition does not use so I get use yeah so let's do it then git add git commit dash m fix update action for our requirements. 
gentle push. All right. So let's wait, 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 wait. So let's understand this accent. So let's understand this return one once more. So on a return um, input field, you are going to add the objects. So for your object, you are going to specify the key. So the key can be something, and you can specify multiple keys if you want. If you case you want to return multiple stuff, you get. So the key, so your object, you have your key, which can be, which is literally going to be a string. Then the, um, the value. So in the case of the value, you can return a query param. In what case? We don't know. But the point is, if you have a query param and that's what you want to return, use your choice. Maybe you want to use the test, maybe your query param is getting there. It's they're just creating that it doesn't it's not a very sensible scenario, but it's it might you might, you might want to use it for test. You might want to return your quads as well. Quads. If you are within a post request or a patch and update request, you can return your request body. Then we can return the variable names. Variable names. Okay. So now, in the case of the variable names, if the variable um, type, if the source of that action that spawns this variable name is either check, uh, either get, or create. So actually, update does not return a query sense. What does an update return? What's, what's your updated? If you update something, what does it return? It doesn't return one. It returns the value of It doesn't return the query sense. Okay, that's just the update. It returns an integer. Update? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. How come? Fresh. It doesn't return a query sense, it's an integer. So when you update, you have to fetch what you update. You don't get the update value immediately. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So the only consideration where we would require you to specify a serializer is when you are dealing with this. Other ones is just going to be constant. But when we are getting, can we be getting something that is not serialized? Hmm? Yes, query set is not serialized now. We can return query sets. So serializer is what converts it into a JSON data. Me, I'm taking a look at it like it's implemented already. You know, just the structural flow of how we do it. So mm -hmm. That's how I'm looking at it. So that's why it looks like that. Okay, so um, let's take a look at our GitHub and see if things are working. Then we can create the component to undo this return flow. Um, okay. Okay, so the push is working. All right, let's go to the front end. We've identified what we want to build for the return flow. So we have the data control here. So data control as in the data param. So let's undo the object param. Um, so let's say new file object control because according to the backend the parameter for here is is an object so tss so let's make get some inference from the data control so this is what we have it has a couple of props so it takes the model name and do change default data current app id method yeah we can have all that as well so coming back to the object control so props pulling all this stuff so under change okay so again data control 
Yeah, let's define the object control. Hosts objects control. Um, yeah. Yep. Then, yeah, we have this as well. Let's just see what is giving us. We will not use most of it anyways. Um, am I getting fields? Not at the moment, so that might not be necessary. Um, so let's remove all this. Let's remove this. Okay, loading tool is not a deal at this moment. So when you are dealing with a return, we want to specify your. You can add keys. Uh, you can add return keys. So just like we have for filter where you add, so we add your key and the value. So const get objects home. So the get object form is going to return a div that contains It's going to need to contain multiple items, so you need to also add. No, no, I'm trying to think about if I want to do this or I want to go into the. I want to create a separate component for it. It can just visualize what it is looking like. Then understand what. Uh, so let's let's go down first. Let's ignore that. Let's return. So here I'm going to have. Um, data we have the data so within the within the form we want to have add your objects then the status field which is based on the fact that we are dealing with a is it going to be within this hmm? is it going to be within this you know what yes it's going to be within this the, the status field is just specific to the return unless we can add a maybe let's leave this one uh, we have field control already um, let's see filter functions parent field so let's status code right so let's just contain let's copy this Okay, you remind everything here before. Yeah. Let's copy, let's paste this here. So this is for return value and this will be status code. So params is key value, this, then under change is required. Um, no, this, this one does not have a required situation. Your, if you don't return the response, if you don't return the status code, it's going to add a default. It's not a compulsory stuff. Um, so the label props is going to be status. What is this? Is chase this? Um, the name let's use status underscore code. Add ID name. Type is test. Is there a number? Yeah, so that's what should be number. Then place it there. Huh? Enter. So avoid. Let's let's still undo this first. Let's not go forward. If you have an issue in the future, we'll undo it. So enter return status. Right. Then this will be status prod with a little value parent the status code. So that's the what I was trying to suggest is that why is it not just a list? List of what? Because we already have the status codes. We know the status codes. Mm. Why don't we just send a list of them? Rather than the user entry within them. So you want them to select back? Because we can only have two hundred, two one, three hundred people. You know my status code. Okay. But I was going to pick the one. People know this for so you want them to you want to pick for them. Okay, we can, we can, we can do that. We can do that too. 
So let's let's just make this a label select then select props. The top is no longer required. Um, value change. So this will now be the value. Um, then the items. So let's define the status groups. Let's see what it will give us here. Lowers, Lava Constants, Export Count, Status Groups. That's first 200. Is it going to recommend? Okay, so one. Okay. What are the two to do? Two to eight. There's two to six here. I'm not using two hundred. I'm not using any of two hundred. Then we have. They might, they might want to do that. Okay. No, our system does not have that. Okay. Foot flow now. So four one, four three, four four, and five hundred. There is four hundred now. We use from the bad request for one uh, transition issue for to the work of like puppeting or we are doing something wrong. Then 500, the 502 is like generic, it's going to come by itself. So here we can can have items now the status code dot map. Then we have key is item then values item sister spots yeah so the reason why this one is like this is i'm the one that's defined if i wanted to still figure it out i can figure yeah. it out but the difference is for example, now you're matching AI. I'm pretty sure it wants the array in a specific format. It's not just any array you can send. For example, now this array is a string, but the format this one wants is this. For example, now if I go to the um, the constants and I define this as key value, I don't need to specify. You understand? So your machine is too great to request you to do something. You can't just send any kind of array. Okay, you send an array of string. It works. How oh, is it going to do an array of array or an array of objects? So you get the point. So this one too is like that. So I think we have that. And that means the object control is just going to focus on adding the objects. So from level vision our object is a key and value. Yeah, that is the structure. Can be any of this. No, the value can be any of this, the key can be what you define. The, the key is just going to be what you defined. The, then this state of okay. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay. So um this is going to return a div. So we have a div and um just like we did for the filter where you can when you click on the button it shows this at the top so const add add objects set add add objects so here we can say um, add objects and and get the object form then under here um on button click so the the add the button is going to be under the form so you can either remove it or stuff then under here you can have a button to okay add object so this is the button so add object is just going to be um a 
So this can change. Mm. These are add objects. Do we want to add a new input field or just store a it? new key a new key value? You can add multiple, okay. so you're adding a new key value here. Yeah. So um this is going to be true, and that means this button is always going to be available when um not add objects and um this. Then finally, you want to display your objects you've added. So more like a key value there. So let's say um, you are going to specify the key for each object. You are going to specify the uh, what again? Just like the way we have um, the value here. Let me see. Okay, my the stuff has refreshed. So um, let's do consts okay we have data actually so i think this data should actually be an array it's an array of um, different objects key value objects so we can have data dot map so we have the index so we'll return there's no need for this I just add div and, and this becomes the key. We have the index. So in a so I think it's not just going to be a key value pair. It's going to contain the key. So this is going to be a different structure. So let's call it um type objects okay let's use key value pair let's not over complicate it but an array of it what is the issue here okay default data is an array of it anyways yeah so we have the item so um the structure is going to be something like this so we have the key equals to this, then the value equals to the source variable names and the value of that stuff you get. Okay, so we have um So we have a span, oh, let's call it div, that has a, a span of key, then this would be a span into item, item dot key. I think this imported something, no. So that's the first part. Then the second part is the div, the key, okay, the value, the item dot. Then we have this. This would be the source, and this would be the value. Uh, Okay, so this is just the basic flow. With maybe we'll consider the serializer flow later on, but this is the basic flow, and this is what we want to figure out from this stuff here. So when you when you specify the yeah, they are going to have a but a back button here. Then we are going to have a form. Okay, so we need an input for, so we have the label input. So, um, did I even import this? Okay. Um, what is 
the props again. So label props. So we have the children and the object key. So that's key, the ID is key, the name is key, the type is test, the place that is enter key. Yep, and that is required. Required is true. Okay. Okay, so that's the key. So then the next one will be the select where you select your source. And I think I've implemented that before. Let's go to data control. Um, is it result variable select? Yeah. Um, let's see. Not this. Um, there's something that leads to this. Let's find it. Data filter source value. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. So let's copy the custom select. Um, the custom select is going to. Let's do custom. So the value, yeah, so let's we can still use this. We can use this whole part. Okay, so let's come back to the object control. Then the let's get the label custom. Let's get the custom. Let's get the data source. Okay. So choose the source. And this one is going to be source. Then we have to update this. So there is no undo change here, is there? Yeah, we have one at the top, but not here. Just so we've actually we've not implemented the way okay. the Android change for this one, so we're going to get to that later on. But the Android change we defined is it expecting any um, parameter? Where? I know props, the props type. Yeah, it's expecting. Okay. Label custom. So we get to that, then the source, data dot source. Um, yeah, I get to get to a single one later on. Um, it's not going to be data. So if this dot source result variable, then we have the the default value. We're going to get to that. So we, this when well, we are calling this function is going to require the index. So probably we can use it to edit as well. So we just use the index. Then the input. So we have this. So let's call this the. So this is going to take in an index of number. Maybe not index, anyways. I think that's not compulsory. Whatever we want to push, we push it to the index. So const active data set active data. Then use states. Key value pair. Okay. So what am I missing here? Okay, on change. This is going to set. So let me undo custom change or undo change here. Const undo change equals to the key, which is strange. And the field, or rather, the key is the string, the value is also going to be a string. Then you can say new data is this, not, not that. Sets active action data, 
Okay. Then that 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 data. Yeah, that's fine. So for this under change the key is the is the key. So the key is key. Then this is this. So that's about that. This one, then we have under change. This is the source. Then the value is the value. Then this is going to be active data dot source. Yeah. Then active data dot source. Okay, active data does not have a object initialization, so we have to give it. So we avoid all those error. So this is source, this is source, then the this will be the value of the risk. So this will be active data dot value. So this will be value and to change the value. Then we place all the enter key. Um, just enter value. Should we enter the no, we've entered the key already. Yeah, that is, that is the correct value. This is the correct stuff. So the name here is still value. Value. Then it target. Then undo change. Then we have the value again. So after that, uh, label plus done. What's still wrong with this? Okay, it doesn't have a pleasant tag. It does one. It doesn't. I think it's missing. Okay. Okay. So after that, we need a button. Where did the button come from? Okay, that's correct. Um, what should be inside here? Add. Okay. So, once you add it, um, undo submit. Um, on submit. Undo submit. We have const undo submit e the e dot prevent different e dot stop propagation. Is this stop and propagation peculiar to chat? No, it's chat normal JavaScript. So the whole idea is that this is within a form, a bigger form. So I want it to just be specific to this particular form. So once you are done with this form, don't go any further again. So we want that event to stop on this form. Okay. So the event has already run here. Okay. That's the same event. If you want it to stop, don't go further again. So that's the right idea. So now that we've stopped the propagation, then we want to get the um, index. So we still need index. In some instance, so in case we want to edit, so even though we have the active data, it's just the active data, we still need the index. So let's say index is not required, it's an optional number. Yeah, I will still use you. So now if I come down to E, then optional index. Number. Um, so here I want this to be E into undo submit and E of index. Okay, so I can say 
my const by index equals to index of data dot length obviously that's the right idea then new data um that's not what i want to do anyways let me see what it's going to do nah, 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 nah. that's a little bit Okay, that actually works. So you are splicing it. So you, you, you obtain the former data, then you splice at your index from a zero the active index, then set data equals to the new data, then undo change the new data, then set add object to this, set add okay, that works. That was perfectly well. Okay, so what exactly is remaining here? So I'm not using model name. I don't think it's needed here. And I'm not using parent app either. I might actually still need to invest to sell as I will get there. We do that. So export default object control. Okay. So model name, I'm going to make it optional. Should it be optional? It's going to require it. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, okay, so I think we defined the the structure is going to be most likely not full, but we'll get there. So let's come back to the um oops, basic info create view. Action controller. So, so the index, not index, param definition. Yeah, this is where we did that. So we have the case model here. So if you are dealing with a the model, then we do things like this. Case field, then get the params itself. So if action dot models, we have this. So yeah, the action dot models is the only special case. So let's just come down here and add another case. Case objects, right? Let's verify the return is an object. So case objects. We want to return. Okay, we've not added the params to the um, param fields. So let's get this object equals to object control, control. Then the status code equals to status code. Okay, so back here, so case okay, so object, we want to return param fields dot object. So uh, the ob object, it takes in See what data takes just to confirm. Data okay, so in the case of the this one is actually an object, so it's going to be like this. Okay, I think I've I think I see I've not really completed. I think it should be it should be an object, but I'm not Let's see. Um, data field or uh, object field. So model name. Let's see if that would work. Is that working? Yeah, that will not work. Why is it breaking? Yeah, 
that's that's the issue so in our field we still have to define so you can see even the data control we still define the data control field so we can still have exports costs objects control field so i'm just going to reuse uh, this Object control with default data is this one okay it's an array so that means this is supposed to be an array okay and this one is going to be um, objects okay so this is going to be object control field and that should be better so here we can now go back to this so let's copy everything yeah but let's have it okay then props that objects the active data okay an empty array but that doesn't matter i think we've already had that on the side there okay so what do this then the next one is the status code okay status code what are these statements they are parameters now you don't want to be checking it's just you're just checking so all the parameters that are coming from here is just going to read it okay, for object parameter this is what i want to use okay. for status group this is what i want to use everything is already identified like that okay, okay. so status group then we return so what does status group takes it's going to take something now. At least it's going to take in the uh, it takes the params and the other. So why is it not complaining? Okay, it's not status code like this, it's status code. Okay, so with that done, we should be able to see some stuff. So add function for a get then add action. So the get action is now here. And if I click on it, it should just work out of the bucket. So you can add your filter. So result variable name. So we've not added that result. Get it result variable name is required. But I think there are some that we set first. We don't want to show them at all. Yeah. No, the get is okay. I'm just saying you remember. Okay, okay, yes, yeah, yes, I don't yes. want to show show the result variable. So it's let's look for sure. let's use for the one that is false. So for example, the return. the return. So let's go back. Okay. So return. Yeah. So we only have result variable name. We are not even saying the other ones. We get that later on. So this should not show. So let's come down to our code. So get params. This, if it is model, if it includes model, else there is no else. So that means my consideration is just if it if it includes model. So that means I was trying to just undo the model scenario so far. We need to check if. Um, no, no, no. Um, so if params that model is this action params, then item. Yeah. So if it doesn't include model, so let's have an else. 
So I still want to have the action parents. That's strange. Item push that stuff. Um, I want this to be a single function. So let's do const push params request to. So actual params. So this one has a check for okay let's let's ignore it i think it's a simple check so there's no need to have a separate function for it so else i want to have item lists okay So that's all we have to do here. Then let's do the return variable. So this is the return variable. So use return variable. Item the push. But I use return variable return the Korean stuff. Hold on. Um use return variable, you can order beyond defined. So I want to check if use return variable is not equivalent to false. Then we want to push this. Yeah. But the thing is, I use return variable return in Korean. And now that's what the structure is. The structure is a okay. boolean. So we can see the button now, add objects, then we have status group, then there is no longer a use return variable. So let's find the use return variable where it is not specified. That means it's not compulsory. So the check. So let's go to the check. So it's there. Actually, no. Restrain that is required. Yeah, let's refresh and see. It is not equals to false. So we have the gets add action. So gets yeah. It's true. Then check. check. Check is required actually. Check yeah, it's is great. Then it. Yeah. Oh, okay, it didn't push. So that means it sees it as okay. both false and um, that was what I wanted to confirm. Um, let me let me console log the use and see what it looks like. Console dot log use return variable. So this is false. But why is it false? Because we just destroy it. Yes. Um. It's not by default, why can't this false? Really? It shouldn't be. Let's look at the network. But it's not there, as you can see, it's not defined. So that means there's a check that actually caused that. Let me see where I define this. Okay, I said all oh, false. Yeah, that is the issue. Ah. I can just assume that. So this should work now. Okay. 
so not it's here now. But it's not required. This is here but required. Then which one does not use it? Then return return does not use it. It's not there. Makes sense. So our status code we can specify status code. Then we can add an object. So let's make this a button. I don't know why it's not a button. So object can show. Find object. It's not a button. Okay, it's like it's not a normal button. Did you reload, reload everything? So return. Okay, so add objects. Okay, so this back just be close so when i cancel okay so let's add some let's style this a little bit mm -hmm. uh, to some extent but not all just need the space wide yeah so it just be cancel uh, so this one has space dash y dash two then this becomes x then it's also a button then for the form we need a class name space dash y dash two oh, this thing you refresh why you let's do that again dead dead let's return add object okay now don't you just make it so we can shift it to the other side no, you can If you shift to the other side, it's going to make make a lot of sense. Okay. Then and we need an underline here. Um, so this itself is going to have a margin B. So is it a margin of BG? So it starts MB of theory. Then the button is going to be in a div. So we have a class F plus justify end. Okay, then um, this is going to be variant of post. Um, Do we have sub two? Eh? Huh? Do we have anything like sub two? No. Then under the then we have an H H R. Remember all these things. Let's see what if it's <coughs> if it's correct. So we have get this we return add objects. Okay. What you hey your head dissolves. Alright, so um this ad does not influence anybody does it we already could need an ad um, on submit okay not not this one uh, i think it's this one so this ad should not be there unless there is something in here so this ad that means we also need another button that we can click to give us a new key and a new value or we must submit this form first before we can append the new one. Yes. You can't just you don't want to make it multiple. So if this one add the stuff will show, then you can either edit, then the add object will come up again. Oh. Oh, 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 okay. So let's say key um results or results, then the source 
So the reason why we are not having the variable name is because there is no variable name at the moment. Yeah. So let's say the, we just want to get a keyword argument for title. And I do add. I thought I fixed that. Oh, it does stop proposition, does it? Align that image well, object. Oh, this is it. This image index. Propagation, that's not right. Prevent default. The prevent default is the one that we are actually on. Because this is the, you can see, the prevent default is the one that actually did not work. So, what did die spell prevents? That seems correct as well. What did I miss? Point it out. What? It's not the issue, was not that it was stop propagation. Are we, are we meant to give our button a specific type? No, it's the button submit type is actually working as you can see. That's why it's able to do the stuff it did. So why did it load? There is no error here. I need to fix this before. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What am I missing? stuff from there before uh, okay. Uh, okay so prevent default what what propagation is not working so let's see that Password. Maybe this, maybe because it's not. Maybe because it's not a component. Because. Well, that should not be the case. What are we missing here? Well, let's make it a component and see what happens. Okay, that's that was the. So let um, the issue is not even we are we are removing this now. The issue is now this one. 
like we are doing the right thing here already. So let's try to make it a component. Is it that cost gets you need to cost? Uh, object form. So let's do cost object form. So it's going to use the same props. Let's, let's use the same props as as this. But it's going to need the active data itself. So it's going to need the active data. It's not being controlled from here again. So let's return. So we need the active object. That's the action that we put it here. Okay, so we said active object. So this action. yeah, so this will be on the close. Um, then we have this. We need the method. The method we have some operations on the index. Okay, so based on this, cause our type of objects on props. You can just do partial props now. Let's come back. So we have the, we still need to update, update. So we have on close. Does this case like this? On close, then mm, method or custom operations and actual index. Method, let's just copy this. The model name is true, is strange. Um, method index. Which is actually yeah, actually yeah, yeah, yeah actually here. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, object. So also. The method, the custom operations, the object in this, and this, this object form. We have the method controls project the method. Okay. Uh -huh. And submit. So let's do it with like this. Let's remove uh, this. Data. We are going to use it later. Yeah. Uh, I don't use it to get. But we use it later. But you've been noticing that refresh even after you see it. No, no, I don't have any other refresh as, aside from that. I've been, at least I did the data of control and there was no issue. So add objects, results, this, title. 
So that was not the issue. And something is wrong with that. Like if you go to the data control, that is its own submitter as well. You can see that is the inputs, not in, not the data control rather. You can see that it has its inputs and it has its submits. So you can see under submits, so you can see the submits. So and it doesn't propagate. The button is quite busy, just like that one as well. And the form imputes. Yeah, just like that. Just like that one. If it's at, you show it. If not, so I'm not sure what the issue is with this. Let's console dot load the event market, but the page will be entirely this up. Let's try to debug it. We shall debug that so this thing. Mm, no problem. Let me use the also. And our loaded inputs, yes, it's correct, it's I don't change. We need to go custom. This one is outside, so it's not an issue. We bring the first two position. What am I missing here? It could be a type error or something. I'm missing something. <laughs> So let me return, let me revert things back. I don't want to be passing this much props around. Then it's still almost the same thing. I figured it out, actually. Okay, let's come back here. There is no console log here, so obviously there is not a console log issue. Uh, and do submit. This, that seems to be okay. There is no action on the form. Maybe I'll select. Maybe I'll custom. Then the add button. Let me actually get the. At least we've tested filter earlier and there was no refresh and we could add we could add filter. These are the kind of bots that just mess your life out.
Maybe I don't need that phone. Let's see. But I have phone in the field tap on it, so let's and I'm trying to observe something from the lab. If I go here, let's do get category filter build filter. So we probably might change this down to something like this. Build um return object then this looks so that it's consistent um, so we have title result graphs so this is the so this did not complain now did it? it didn't complain that I have form inside form for this you get is it, are we having to are we having it inside and that I'm um, um, this one. Everything is inside the form now. Or not. So let's let's kind of trace things back. Because I'm saying now that action controller. So these are the action items, which is cool. Okay, then the action item. So this is the action item. So we are having everything within a bunch. So let's see what could have made this being a form. So a return. Why? It's not in a form. Uh, let's check. This is param definition. This is the status code. Yeah, it's certainly not in a form. So this is the object control. This is not in the form as you can see. This is the object control. And the param definition. So if it includes model, we have this handling. And because it's not include model, we have this handling. Get field contents. So if you go to get field contents, if it's model, if it's filters, if it's data, if it's this. Then in parallel fields, then the this is not in the form. Then if you come back to the action controller, uh, where is the stage part? Let's see index. So this is the stage, this is the index. So the first that the part we did, did the type selection, this is it. Then the param definition, this is this. That is where we did this. Oh, we have, we have the minus code of application. Where? The first time. Oh, we have minus code. That's why I see the values. What does that, that, that supposed to do? It has nothing to do with anything. The point is, this, these things are on a separate uh, content. They, they don't have any issue. However, we have. Uh, a form, an overall form. But why is this one complaining? Is the issue because whereas the form control does not complain. get the form in form this time around but obviously maybe it's just um. so let's try the let's try the filter again let's see if it complains gets and nothing gets category filter build filter no complaints Okay, let's come back. Return add object. Why is it complaining with this? Let me see the filter again. 
Oh, okay, I see. This is it's a separate model. Yeah, let's see. So this is existing somewhere else, it's like a pot. It's different. You see the Obali has already killed the background. But in the case of the Britain is still within. Okay, we should be able to fix this though. Let me check. Form in form stop open stop reloading. This is yes. The stop is open. Okay, so they use a ref to add to that. Okay, let's use use React. How did you say ref? Uh, it's like de by defining the I to that means they are actually using a ref. Okay. No, no, hold on, hold on. Just to hold on. So, stop propagation does not really matter. But this one is just a single form. Hold on, to prevent the form from getting this. So, uh, no, yeah, that's, it's a, it's a stage now. So, this is a single form. How about? So let's call it that ID ID one stop events Stop propagation is meant to be the, the flow. I don't know why that is an issue. Let me try again. But you also have the type is okay. Type as well. Of solid inside the body. That's not an issue, bro. The only reason why the stop is submitting in the first place is because it has this type of submit. If it doesn't have this type of submit, it will submit. So this weird. Like I've actually used top partition where it was. So I don't know why this is coming like this. It's so weird.
Let me use task proposal. That one is for that summit. This one is for this summit. So, for example, if uh, the, this button is within this form, if I call it, it's not going to get to the query, but it's still this one that will go through. So, if I say stop query, this one, it means it stops here. It doesn't get to the query. If I click the button under the query, it's not going to come here. It's going to come because it doesn't even know that this form exists. So I think there are a couple of people that are claiming that stop why isn't this working today? I spent an hour from this finding why what why we add service not my female to best so we spent a very very like this to try and find this vision of this kind of group. There was an event that was happening on clip of the document in which we were checking to see the event already. Or my did contain my did does does contain the target well yes in this in the document with events if I was active. If you try and find them know that is not very big. It's not around. Okay, let's see what it's I've not used this thing before, I might be, be surprised, but I've actually used it before and it worked, so not sure. Oh, I have to prevent default first before stopping the page. Let me show that, let me change the other first and see what happens. I don't think that should be the case, but. Is method add function uh, everything right. so the prevent default did not work. So that's why we have this. So that means the prevent default was working is a stop propagation that is not working. Yes, I think I saw one stop immediate propagation. Um, what is this type? React. So E T 
start start like this one. Let's update my Spotify. Because I Almost feels like this is not the button. So I think you might actually be up to something not adding the type here. Because from my observation, but there's no way it should submit now. So let me see if I put button here, it won't submit. So my assumption was was going to be like okay maybe that's not the button that's actually submitting it maybe it's the parent one but certainly even the button mm, wait there's a possibility the ad that I clicked did not do anything even though it's within the parent I think the problem might be the button truly. It is important. Then no problem. So it, it has always been submit, but this one add objects. Let's make this type button. But it doesn't matter because it's not within it. But let's make it type button anyways. It's still going to be the parent is still within the form. So let's make this a submit. And I know that's where the update um, button or something came from. And it's washing those inputs, so I guess that's why. Is it that one or the one that we call on, on return? That's why. It's not one on return. So there's a global form so that when you click on our updates and there is a required feed on that form, it's going to come to. Definition 
this param definition should be within a a use context so let's see oops use cluster function um, get add function get add action so this is the actual controller index this is the param definition there is no form So let me understand something. The param definition does not have form. Right? Okay, this is it. Why do I have form here? Get params. Let's look at it from here. This is where the issue seems to be coming from. So it has an unsafe params. I told you that it tries and a stop propagation. Yeah, you say you don't have anything to do with it. No, shouldn't. This should just be an on add params. The form, I think this is where the mess up might have come from. Because this one. So get params. But we still need to submit it now. No, hold on. Get params. undo change every one of them has an undo change an undo change is where so when you undo change when you save something in the params you have a use effect to listen to those change and on add params where is this coming from yeah that is literally it so you listen to the changes in these params then you add it so use effect on add param and there's a param change. Yeah, let's see. I think that was that's probably where the issue is coming from. So add function. So let's deal with the ones we've been doing before I say. So let's add check. Oh let's say get. Oh oh. Oh I see. So I have to submit it. Where is now the button coming from? So use effect when I do use effect, it means it has submitted already. So I'm not So I want to use this effect. I would use when something has changed. So let's let's adjust again. Param definition. Let's not use this effect. Because something might not really happen. So let's do set params. So let's say const new params equals to This, then you set params, new params, then you on add param, new params. Let's check this out. I think that's refresh. I think that on add param only gets called when you click on the new button. button. Which button? The third button you use that. Okay, there is there is a button in ESF. Oh. Yeah, there's a button here that um, add. Okay, okay. But then, then the button should not be controlled by a form. Yes. The button should not be controlled by a form. Yeah, it shouldn't. So, it so let me let me revert. You can add the yeah. yeah. So we have the unsafe params, it's not an event, it's just a button, let's remove all this, 
then we will come down to the add button so the type is button and on click and save no yeah save programs yeah so yeah that was a good fit and let's let's just try to do a shake yeah let's try our idea i'm coming the get would work because the form is obviously not there yet but i think there was a there was something with this form initially in terms of um, like a spacing so let's do class name this dash y dash t okay let's try again add action search okay there's a space category filter item done don't need element add okay and if i do edit Get all these things there. I want to add it here. Okay. I can delete. Okay. Let's now do the. Okay. Let's do the return. Add object. That was most likely the issue. See? But. Why? Is top of addition not working? We're having to. To what? Stop programmation and preventing default. But the the source, the parent is different. For this one, it isn't. This one, immediately you click on that, you are displaying this form. You still don't get. This form is an outside form, so we have form, and the get params is inside it, right? Then inside the get param, we have another form inside here that has its own button, that has a close, and has its own button. I think the issue is probably we closed it now. This one. Mm. Then this one has its own button here. Uh, yeah. This one. What was what was the point? Is inside this one that we're meant to have only and stop propagation. Only this one. This one is going to be uh, prevent defaults. If you see that, then no. edit. No. no. So that, mm. that. that was not how it works. The only reason we, we shouldn't have stop validation here is because if there is no form, if, if there's another form here, we should we, st we will still have stop validation here. But the parent form is not meant to contain stop validation. Why? It's only teacher. No. It, 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 it will just call it trying to stop validation. The stop validation does not affect each other. It's just, it's, it's just like they say, it's saying, when you call this function, don't propagate outside here. That's what it means. It doesn't mean if it is parent or stop. The reason why that one is not working, we probably will still have to expect that. Let's see if maybe we're not closing something like you still do. We'll experiment it later. Let's just try to run this up. So, update control. Let's return this back. This one is here. Grabs the value. Grabs then that. So we just need to format this one better. Yeah, the value, the variable name, then the value. The you need value. to add the empire text though, so people can understand. They are the one adding it now. It's not as if we just, just the, they are the one adding it so they should be able to recognize what they added. So, however, uh, we need to be able to either delete or edit. So, you can add another object again. Uh, result. 
but we shouldn't be able to add the same key. So not necessary. If they add the same key, we we'll just replace the current key with. <laughs> yeah. So there is no need to stress it. Is the key? You don't need to have a check to tell them that no. Just replace it. It's, for example, that when you are returning something in your, or you can have, you can have multiple keys. Just no. The only thing is that if somebody has, you create results one. Mm-hmm. Yes, one. You create and that, but this result one is returning something different. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you now create and that result one. Mm-hmm. And you want it to. Be that is just an update. Better. Mm-hmm. That part of is that means rest one now is supposed to be better. You know that that. So we shouldn't. Well, it's not need. Okay. So that's going to that's going to do our edit flow. And that's the edit flow. So you should be able to edit this one on by default. But in case you went to add and you add the same key, it will just still serve as an edit flow. And thinking about it, I don't think we need the index. How do you know? The key is image for edit. You get so the key is unique. I don't think we need Oh, I don't think we need the index. Oh, this is out. So this one is just going to be this and based on that we have this. So in that case, new data equals to this active data. Yeah, that was much cleaner. So, so now we can just we just it's just going to be the same function that handles the data that handles where you add something that has the same. Key. Um, but, so actually, it's we, not to it's so, not to so actually, we have to make a check here because with this current flow, we are not considering that. But why? By using the same button as the data, it also handles the case. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. can work because what it, it works, it works. Okay, is this the same button? Mm. So the thing will now be when you edit. So for example, when you add this button and the active data already exists, then you can't change your key again because you are trying to edit. If you change your key, then you are literally adding a new one unless you delete it. So maybe we can do that. We won't, we won't change, you will, you will leave it there. So maybe we just want to add a new one that is still returning the same value. So that is more, more likely to pick it. So yeah, it works. So now let's fix this. So we have existing data and um, we but have we this. So we can't just append new data. We have to find, we have to check if the active data is equal to key. So we have to do some checks here. So let's do new data dot filter item. So here I'm saying if item dot key is equivalent to this. So I, in this case, it's not really going to be a filter, it's going to be a map. So I can say let then new data equals to this, and this is going to be a map. So if this 
return to this then return active data I want to return active data, I want to return it's an object so I want to return item then active data that's not the way to be active data then return item Okay, so we have this flow. Okay, let's do it like this. Let's say const const this. Eh? So let's look at it together. So we are looking through our data. We are mapping through it. Yes. And we are saying the item is literally active data. Yeah. yeah. So we are saying if item dot key is equivalent to we call it active data dot key. Yeah. Then return. So actually I should no, I'll just return active data. Because that's we are changing to that. Else return item. So now we want to make a confirmation here if we updated or not. So we can have this as let is update, which by default equals to false. So now, if this if this is this, then this update true. equals to true. So that means we've updated. Yeah, we this update is true. Okay, let's do it up there. But what if it wasn't successful? What is not successful? The updating. What is not successful? Like returning the active data. How would it not be successful? Maybe it's unless this person. Writes its own JavaScript aside from the one because there's a structure of what you are expecting. Like, how will you say it's not, it's not as if we are pushing to a database that the database is a service on its own. That's really how that is. So now, if if not is update, if not is update, then we want to push the new data. So, yeah. That's what we want to do. So now this has handled this trips all the possible scenario for that. So we can both do edit and add new. So if for example now if I do get add return so objects, let's add results keyword that you may type to add. So this is it. If I add object again, if I add results, query params. Try to add so it has changed the query. If you add a new one, what do we get? Result two. Let's say results, keyword argument, then another one comes up. Yeah. So that saves us a couple of stress. Oh, that's nice insight. Yeah. So um, let's format this. It's going to be um, we've done it on filter. Let's get the filter on. Filter control. Filter item. One, yeah. One thing that comes to my mind is right? why don't we make it a card that is going to be clickable so they can copy to paper? Copy what to paper? Because. Yes. What are they talking What do they want? Why are they talking to paper? So they will just be able to, rather than coming back here to check the keys and report back to you. So what do they want to use that information to do? You can just save it somewhere now. To do what? So you can, in case you are using it in a field again, you can use it. In to case, do what? I, I might want to use my return key now here, mm -hmm. one function that I'm creating outside. It's going to be a list. You okay, don't okay, have okay. what you don't need now. Why well, do this need out in memory? Um, this is going to be name, and this is going to be what we call this um, results object item. Object object item. Uh, so on delete index value. Uh, 
don't need the index in this case. We just find the key based on the value. So object item. Let's just add the index. It's, it just makes it easier. It's not going to cost us anything. Object item. So we have the key. Uh, no, we change it now. The key equals to the filter. Let's not add a filter. Let's just Next add a space. data. Data. So data dot key. So we have that. Then. I need to have some spacing. So the next one is value. Not actual value. Let's see the name this thing. So value equals to data data dot source. Then data dot value. Okay, so on edit, so let's get an on edit on on edit. So we have the button for trash. Let's get. So let's put this in D. Um, edit. Um, edit. So, really want to shoot it. so we have a um, what we call it now object item, subject control. So this takes in objects I think then key does the okay so we have the key there's the data the item on delete on edit so the index I don't think we need in there at all because we can access it from ESF. Abby, we don't need the index. Why do we know? Why, why am I doing it here before? Maybe that one the structure is different. That should that would be a little bit because I don't need it. Okay, so let's, let's finish this up. So, on delete, um, let's go down our function. Then pass it the index. Before our function taking the index. So, undo delete. Undo delete. Const undo delete equals to index index of type number then 
Yeah, completely. It's does this thing like splice like this? Then just undo. I don't have splice. But it's I don't know that is that from the index and ends on one. No, it's just removing like okay. It removes from this okay. It starts here and ends here. Yeah. So the index <laughs> can be zero, it's going to end on one. So set action data set at object true. Well, let's use filter on the index profile. <laughs> you don't trust that. So undo, undo. Doesn't start with the index. Then undo edit. I don't see what you did in the edit now. We just record our function. This is it now. Undo edit. We just record the function they set as the data. Undo, I don't know. I'm not sure if that worked though because of although I think React has bash set states now, so it should work. So initially there it would lead to race condition. So the whole idea of edit is set the active data. To the current data. Yeah, set it. This should actually it. yeah, then set add objects, make it come up again. Make the form come up again. To be true. Okay. So it has something inside it to edit. So let's see. But what happens after that? Nothing. The normal flow. So return, add objects, results, products, tied to add. So we have this. Yes. So key is result, value, price, tied to, so you can edit. But so if I edit, yeah, that was the that was the major issue I had. You can see that the select updated, but the this one did not update because the adding of data was happening the moment this one was happening so it doesn't take in the value you get the point so if we want to undo things well now we can say something like um, set an edit state so we will listen to that edit state so it's when that edit state has happened that we want to yeah so that's something we could do so that would be better so let's do that so const is edit set is edit because to use state false so after ending submit set is edit false. Okay. So now we want to have the use effect. Use effect. Dashing if is edit. Then set add object goes to true. Mm -hmm. And you listen to this edit. So now for the edit flow, we are not setting this as set, set is edit to be true. So we should set is edit true first before adding the action. No, we are down to point. They are going to happen the same thing, whether you set it first or not. Really? Yeah, we had bashes there. How do you know we had bashes? Yeah, when you are not updated and you, I don't know what you are reading. You have bashes there now. It's if the set state are happening together, instead of doing this, then doing this. It's just going to do them once. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think that's it. Then the button here. Um, let's have class name space. Space white here. Okay. Let's try again. Add function get this add so we have get return add object results to add then add so we have this we can do a bit last thing would be work
was like key notes up in the right thing. In our form, are we using the items as key? Yeah. So in our object filter? Uh, we don't have value here at all. So the first one should have worked then. Yes, we don't need the edits. We don't have, we didn't set the value for that. Okay, so let's come back to the get form. This does not have value. Value goes to active key. Huh? That is if we have active key. I mean, that's the point now. That's why it was not working the way I wanted to work. Are we not meant to put or empty? No, there's no need. It's ready to derive the empty by itself. So, results. Key. Add. Oh, okay, my spacing has gone. So, I did this part. Okay. Um, class. Space. Four. Okay, I think that aspect should be working. Return. And also, when you add a return, you can't add any function again. So, there will be a track trace there that once you return is available, add function button is done. Because there is no point in it. You get. So, we have this add function, uh, return. Add object results keyword argument tie to then you add so if you edit this it's still there if I change this to query params then you add it's not query params what are you missing now if I change this to Results is going to add a new one. So, and if I delete the results, that went away. Yeah, this is working as it should. So, if I try to add without a status code, yeah, I can do that, which is okay. So, return. So, I should not be able to add an action again. Okay. you remove it so we can quickly fix down then if we go to edit again yeah this is back to how it was right yeah. then you can add another object again if you add results want it to be keyword arguments want the value to be name and add and we change this to this then you can change this to 200. That was very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, yeah, I was even thinking about this, how the different add for the index. That is what I was like. No, that was, that was why I said we'll just do that. So let's quickly fix but this. Does that work in all scenarios? What? In, like, the implementation we did for our on add. Whether you can use the same function to edit and add. If you have a limit, yeah, it can work across Any, anything as long as it's a unique key. So let's fix the add action, button. add action button. So action controller, action item, undone. So this is the add action button, and this is undone. So I believe I have access to the actions here. So I just want to check. So let me console log the action. Console dot log actions. So so we have type of return. So if type of return is within the action, then it shouldn't be able to do anything. So it's an array of object that has a type. So let's take note of that. So I can say const can Add action equals to actions dot find in 
to item item dot type dot to your case is equivalent to return so if not this if not this then you can add action so if i come here and add and add so it can't add again so let me just put because i still want it done to be at that site really yeah well we should just disable the button which button that add action button rather than remove it so there is a little easy way so if this and this else let's have a null yeah we have we not take that space yeah, no it's better we just do no no let's, i don't want that component to, to mount at all so i'll just have an entity if you get what i'm saying i don't want this component instead of if i go to the same way that means the component is still mounting it's just like i'm just saving something from showing but yeah i don't want the component to mount so which means uh that particular component is not on this tree because this does not exist so there is a difference so you can see that the dot is back to its position the diff is taking that place so however if i delete this now add action is back nice. yeah so yeah let's let's refresh stop here for now so i will go refresh and you can come to pick it up again so